Happy birthday, Toddy. You know, again, it was the time of love, the season. Some spicy nuclear noodles. <laughs> you all had a really nice Valentine's Day this week. It was a busy week for a lot of people. The good news is we are on a three-day weekend for President's Day here in the United States and today we're gonna have a little mukbang and we are joined today by Dr. V, my husband. And Hi. <laughs> so he has a little story he's gonna talk talk about today and we're gonna just have some yummy ramen noodles so today I went way out on a limb and I made some chicken ramen noodles not spicy and for Dr. V we have some spicy nuclear noodles that he is gonna die when he eats because it looks so spicy we have a French baguette here and then I made two fried eggs I like fried eggs more than the soft boiled eggs, but you know, most people do whatever they want. So, what are we going to talk about today? The interesting case of Robert Indiana. Robert. Now, you may not know him, but I'm sure you know his work. He was, uh, his, actually, he wasn't born Robert Indiana. I'm going to give you some. His name was Robert Clark, but you'll never guess where he was born. Indiana. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> um, he was born in Newcastle, Indiana, and he was only child and his parents divorced and subsequently he went into the Air Force and then he went and studied art. Graduated from art school in 1953. These are the spicy nuclears. There you go. Do you want an egg? Uh, sure. A little, yeah. Um, so he went and studied, uh, then he went to uh, Europe for a little while, studied in Scotland and came back to the U.S. in, in 1954. Now, he Where was in Scotland kind of did he go? Edinburgh. Edinburgh. University of Edinburgh. Ah. To study art. And so anyway, so he was, uh, you know, you can see where this is going. He was kind of a child of the 50s, right? When the... Um, Post-war? Well, right when, you know, kind of the Great Awakening, the, the summer of love and everything. And mm. so... Before I was born. Interestingly, so like I said, you know some of his works. In 1965, he designed a Christmas card. Ah. For, I think it was for Valentine's Day. Christmas card for Valentine's Day? For the museum, uh, you know, it was a, I guess it was a Valentine's Day card. But anyway, it was for the uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York. Mm. And it was... Like I said, so you're gonna recognize it because it was the love symbol, the L O, oh. no L O with the o over the V E and the O is tilted. Okay, I'll insert the image here. But anyway, so he built that, he made that, and it, it subsequently became rather famous. And so they made it into a statue that I believe was actually placed in uh, New York City. Um, Sorry, I'm slurping. Um, it was, it was in 1970, and then... The year I was born. <laughs> and then subsequently... Mm-hmm. Um, now it's in, um, Milwaukee, actually. A donor bought it and put it there, and that's where it is. But anyway... Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So it's... But it really hit oh, popularity, you know... Hot in here. Again, when, with the love, um, you know, again, it was the time of love, the season of love, and, you know, the early 70s, and so um, people were very into it, and then in 1973, the U.S. Post Office, the <gasps> Postal uh, Service. That's where we know it from. It's a stamp. And it's actually one of the most famous holiday stamps now. Mmm. Um. Hey, you were selling them the other day at... The post office. Yeah, they still have them. And, but what's interesting about this? Well, besides that he has a stamp. So he sold the rights for for only a thousand dollars for the stamp. So he didn't really make any money with the postal service off of that. Mm-hmm. And part of the problem was 
you know, it was kind of typecast. Everybody was kind of like, oh, you're a kind of a one-hit wonder because, you you know, you made the love stamp and that's all you got. Mm-hmm. So he got frustrated with it. And then, so like 40 years ago, he left New York. Like, didn't want to have to do with, deal with the New York art scene or anything. Mm-hmm. And he moved. To Wisconsin? No, to a play to Vinyl Haven, Maine. Now, Vinyl Haven, I've actually been to Vinyl Haven, Maine. Oh, yeah? But it's in the middle of nowhere. It's an island. And you can only get there, like most islands, by boat. Um, I think. And uh, anyway, so he, he, like, was there, but... <coughs> Kind of like, uh, what was it, the author that... Is that spicy? That's not too bad. Stephen King? No, no, no. The one who lived in New York City who became a recluse. Um, oh, J.D. Salinger? Yeah, J.D. Salinger. Mmm. I've been to his town. But over time, he became... That's like, Abby. More and more recluse and like, you know, his friends... People tried to contact him, and it's, yeah, it's more than an hour's ferry ride off the main coast. Okay. Um, so he's way out there. No electricity. No, they, I think they have electricity. It's just like, kind of like a, like a... Artist community. No. Rector's community. It's like a fishing community. Oh. I mean, there's really not much there, but, but, you know, so anyway, his, his, uh, Friends were kind of like, you know, kind of like Richard Simmons. They were kind of like, is he being held captive? Ah, uh, like, yeah. Um, so, like, all his friends were trying to get into him. And actually, the day before, he, so he died. Mm. He died in, um, I think it was May of 2018. And, oh, it was uh, last year. The day before he died. Can I have a piece of bread? The day before he died, there was actually a lawsuit filed by... Um, one of the companies that had the claim to have the rights to his uh, best known works and they the day before he died? yeah so uh, well, I mean I, obviously, coincidentally I don't, I don't know was he sick? no he was old I mean he was 89 I mean oh my goodness. I don't think he was like particularly you know sick but I think he was just I mean, uh, so did they figure out if he was being held against as well? Well, so they still don't know. Okay. Because how There's would the company a, know that he was? So anyway, alive? so they they were thinking that he would he was uh, tucked away by his caretaker and a New York art publisher um, that were churning out like adulterated or unauthorized versions of his work. And oh. keeping him locked up and then like getting that, you know, kind of saying it was under his name. Yeah. Even though, That's pretty common. Even though he wasn't, you know, a, like they don't know what his mental state was because well, nobody so had seen him. Well, so was he someone just having him sign them? Were they painting them and then si having him sign them or was he actually painting them? Well, they don't know, but... <laughs> Like they said, there was a series of silkscreen prints that fe featured Bob Dylan and were supposedly created in 2016 by Mr. Indiana. And they had been recently uh, exhibited at several galleries, including the Bates College yeah. Museum of Art up oh, in yeah. Maine. Wait, I have a question. Why did he change his name to Indiana? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't say. No, I'm not. Such a pseudonym. Mm. Okay. I don't know if people just called him Indiana because he was from Indiana. Okay. Kind of like Miami Ryan. Hi, Miami Ryan. Um, so the art publisher said that he conceived and authorized the recent work that bears his name and that his caretaker um, had been... Uh, just following his orders and limiting 
saying he didn't want to see anybody. He's just old. I need sleep and eat. I need yeah. to eat a lot of soup uh, and try and keep it together. Okay. So the story is. So there's still a dispute with questions of who controls his legacy and his estate because. Does he have kids? I don't think he does. Mm. Never married. Few close relatives. Interesting. So who would who would it go to? Well, I think he does have some relatives. Oh. And but he gave his power of attorney to his caretaker. Oh. Amazing how that works. And like they I think uh he, you know, they have now there's a non, you know, a non profit so called the Star of Hope that's supposedly like Star of Hope Foundation that's supposed to be preserving his legacy. So it sounds mm -hmm. like some shenanigans are going on. Hmm. So it was Toddy West, Westbrook's birthday this week. Happy birthday, Toddy. And. Guess what happened, honey? What? Jeffree Star and Nate and Jean. The they flew up to Seattle. Um, and they celebrated her birthday with her. I thought her last name was Tutorials. No, that's Nikki. Oh, Nikki. Nikki Tutorials. Oh. <laughs> Toddy, Sorry. Toddy lives in Seattle and they went to the Space Needle and they had some great pictures, but Guess what else, following up on our last video, honey. What? I think Trisha and Jason are done. Mm. Donezo. And I want to look at his ratings right now. He did, I, I swear this was a business arrangement because last Friday he was calling for people to come and try out, uh, like comics to come and do a one-liner and make them laugh or whatever and then they were going to get to be on his channel with him and help him you know with content now that he doesn't have trisha he needs to find someone else um and trisha posted this week like you know her valentine's um sex toy adam and eve um video and no jason not even mention of jason and then you know the vlog squad's not a, even sort of addressing it at all so Kind of interesting. I'm sad. I kind of liked watching them together, but I hope Trisha finds a nice guy, a better guy, or at least maybe not a better guy because it's not that I think he's a bad guy. A better guy that's suited for her, you know? I don't know what that guy is. She seems, you know, Jason seems like a regular nice guy. Hmm. You know, and she dated Anthony Michael Hall. I did not know that. Yes, she did. I'm still trying to get over the fact that, that uh, Giselle Bundchen used to date Leonardo DiCaprio for like five years. So Why that does little... that amaze you? I don't know. I don't know. He Just... dates like all the supermodels. Like that was like the error. Like you had to date Leonardo to like be cool. Now he's just fat and ugly. I don't know. I don't know if he's fat and ugly. He, well, he doesn't, I don't know. Mm. But he, uh... He's not, like, handsome and cute anymore. He's no George Clooney, is what I'm saying. I don't know. He still has lots of chicks around him all the time. Mm. I know. So does Johnny Depp. And he's scuzzy, gross, and yucky. I don't know. And I heard he was, like, completely wasted on the, um... Who, Johnny Depp? Yeah, I read he was, like, at the last Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. He was like a nightmare to work with because he was never like straight. I feel bad for him. He's got some demons. Anyway, the weather here in Fort Lauderdale, again, 82 and gorgeous in the middle of winter. And I love it. I don't really love it when it gets hot in the summer, but I love it in the winter. What else? What Trisha? Okay. Um, yeah, Trisha's gone. She's, you know, not on the vlog squad anymore. But I see, I see, I think they have, okay. I discussed this last time. I 
think they had a one-year contract with David and it all is just so coincidental that this blew up and at the one year mark, like literally to the day, right? And their ratings went up and you know, there right. was this big breakup and then, and now they don't film together. I don't know, it just is way too coincidental. How can we find out? I don't know. I, I bet it's all privileged and confidential. I bet there's a contract. Yeah, the interesting, like in California with child stars, they have to release that data, but for like child actors, oh, yeah. you get all that information, yeah. but not for adults, so. Oops. Want some more of mine? Well, did that help your sinuses, honey? A little bit. He's sick. He has a cold. I have a cold. So I said I would make him some spicy ramens because he was sneezing all day yesterday which I thought he was allergic to something, but he's not. Anyway, I, I really like this. Um, we did a mukbang last week with my sister-in-law and I she had never eaten ramen before, so I made a whole thing. Now we didn't end up filming it, but um, she texted me yesterday that she was eating ramen again, she's hooked, so. I like ramen. I was never a huge fan. What, tell them what you made last night for dinner. Made. I made we well we went to the Asian market a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And so I got the pad thai noodles. So I made some pad thai and chicken pad thai. It was so good. Mm. And then we tried the bao buns, pork bao buns, which you steam them and you know it kind of it kind of tastes like dough that isn't quite fully cooked. I think it tastes like wet Wonder Bread. <laughs> So I think that they should make peanut butter and jelly or peanut butter and fluff. Has anyone had peanut butter and fluff? If you're from Massachusetts, you have peanut butter and fluff. It's the Massachusetts state sandwich. Otherwise, you're right. But no one else knows what. When we moved from Massachusetts to Texas, my kids were really little. And so I would make them what we always fed them, peanut butter and fluff sandwiches going to school. And literally, like, moms would come up to me and say, my son saw that your son was eating the sandwich, or my daughter saw the sandwich. What is a pe what is a fluff and utter? Because Max would say he was like in preschool, so he was like maybe three and a half, four. It was four, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was four. So he would say it's a fluff and utter, and no one knew what a fluff and utter was. And I taught all the kids at school what a fluff and utter was. The problem was you couldn't get the right. Do you remember they had? Well, Fluff's a brand. I mean, it's Fluff, still Marshmallow <coughs> Fluff is a brand that you could get in Massachusetts, and literally, my mom would mail it's it down to Medford. me. Yeah, still. and um, they could you could only get in Texas jet puffed marshmallow. Like Kraft makes a marshmallow. It's not the same product. though. Not the same. So my mother would literally mail me down a peanut butter fluff, and my sister would send some too every time so but now in florida we can get marshmallow fluff we can have fluff and udders and it doesn't matter what it has to be like a creamy peanut butter like you know you skippy can do it oh what you can jiff. do it. yeah i like skippy or jeff but i actually am not too picky about the peanut butter as long as it's not the kids don't like the fresh squeezed peanut butter from whole foods at all i've tried that you bought that one time remember yeah, no, they were like, this is disgusting because it doesn't have enough sugar in it, I'm sure. But now they're bigger and I bet they still eat fluff. I should send some fluff over to Ryan in Ireland. So, anyway, what else is going on in the <coughs> community, honey? Nothing really today. It's been kind of slow. No, I like James Charles. Charles is. Oh uh, my God, James Charles's makeup tutorial for, for Valentine's Day. Yeah, with the arrows going into you know, his head. Did you listen to that? Because it was interesting. Because he said that he hasn't been doing a lot of makeup tutorials, which is my favorite thing about James Charles's channel. <laughs> like he did a house tour, and he's doing something with the Vlog Squad this week. Um, and he also fame, uh, filmed this week with um, Ethan and Grayson Dolan. Uh, the Dolan twins and I thought it was interesting because he said that his makeup tutorials don't get very good views and the view the tutorial before that was actually the video before that was um, 
it was two makeup guru artists like making one made one side of his face and the other made the other side of his face and that I didn't really love. Yeah, but I think the problem is too, once you have your own makeup line, it's kind of like you can't really objectively judge like other products. I mean, James, uh, Jeffree Star does it all the time. I, I know, but I mean, I just feel like James Charles like wants to use James Charles's stuff and then, you know, it's... I don't know. Yeah, but I don't the wanna... two artists, so the two artists used his palette and designed his face each their way. It was, I mean, you it's, know, yeah, like but it's, contest. yeah, but I mean, it's like either you want to have, you know, learn the makeup tips, you know, or test the products, but I think, you know, testing the products is a lot tougher when you have your own beauty line and your... Yeah, well, Tati has her own beauty line now and she still tests all the products every single well this year she's not doing every single day videos she's she backed away a little bit because she's trying to get pregnant so yeah well anyway well guys this has been an awesome video we're gonna do another maybe another cold case tomorrow we have the day off so we'll have to film another video honey i don't i don't know i might have to work actually but oh well maybe i'll film it with ryan and um, we hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Remember to be nice to one another because smiles are free and the tea is always hot. Bye.